Yeah. Alright, zoom in. Let's play now. Zoom in. She doesn't want it zoomed in. Alright, I'll do it. Good evening, moms and dads and families. Thank you for coming tonight. This is actually just sort of a repeat performance because we know that parents want to see their kids, and so this is a chance for you to see them. Our big show is actually today during the school day. We did this show three times for the entire sixth grade, entire seventh grade, and entire eighth grade body. So every student at our school got to see your kids perform today um, in one of those assemblies, which was quite a feat. And I have to say, I was not, there's no way I could be prouder of them than I was today because performing in front of your peers is probably the scariest thing you can do. I know that I'm great in front of kids, but the minute I forget in front of the parents, I'm like, oh. So, and you know, you, as, you, as you are my group. So I, I know that they probably have a lot of hearts pounding today, but they did an awesome job, kept their composure all the way through, and really made us proud. Um, tonight we're going to be filming this, uh, this play because we're doing a lot of new things here, and I wanted to kind of share that with you and tell you a little bit about what we're doing here at Theater Arts. So, we're really trying to implement the whole idea of the Common Core into our, all of our programs. And so for this show, we took all of the novels that the kids read through all of middle school. And I assigned each group of kids a different novel to research, look through, reread, give me facts, ideas, thoughts, so that we could then take those ideas and make a spoof on each of those books. So some of the jokes are kind of inside jokes because you kind of have to have read the book. A lot of it though is so kind of obvious humor that you, you'll laugh anyway, okay? Um, but you know, if you're, if you're kind of like, well, what was that? Um, probably you have to read the book. <laughs> uh, but really the, the idea of this was that every kid at our school has to read these novels and we're trying to tell them you have to actually read the book. You can't just sort of read it, you can't cram the novel. So we're trying to teach them a little something through our play, but also have a lot of fun doing it. The feedback I got from the kids was amazing today. Every kid said, oh my gosh, it was so fun. It was the best play, and it was so good. I liked that better than when the professional people came in and did our, their show. That was really funny, because it spoke right to them. It was the kids' voices, and it was their peers, and it was books that they read. So it was so great. Watching the eighth graders was the best, because each time a new book comes, oh yeah, I remember that. Oh, guys when you know Johnny Tremaine which is an eighth grade novel came up they were like what's that but but still they laughed because it's so funny enough and they got the idea of it um it's just really exciting and then on top of that we I challenged my my uh, sound guys and the lights guys to start a PowerPoint presentation so that we could not only do the common core but also involve all of our new technology that we're working on so we made it really interactive and so the kids that were in the way back that usually are spacing out, we're all looking at the videos and watching the screen and you know getting involved no matter where they were, they felt like they were part of the show. And that really made a huge difference in our performance. Um, I have had the opportunity this year to get training um, from a mentor from our district on technology and implementing it in my classroom and using it in new ways. That's why we did take up the system this year. By the way, I, I decided to make this one free because I know it's kind of one of those shows where you're like, I don't even know what it is, so I just figured I'd let you guys come for free tonight. Um, but we will be uh, doing one more show, uh, the little ticket, uh, in June. Anyway, so uh, you know, I did that, and then, so I really want to keep implementing it. We're going to actually take this, and I'm going to be, um, hopefully I'm going I'm to propose that I get to present this idea of using technology in the theater to our district and showing our district how awesome and powerful drama can be and how we can use it in lots of different ways, not just acting, but like the chart, the technology, all the things that we can do with it. These kids really, I gotta tell you, they, they put a lot of work into this play. It was not an easy one to put together, it was not an easy one to write, and it definitely wasn't easy to research and learn. So they, they did it all and they've done a really great job. I'm really proud of them. And I wanna just point out a couple of, of my friends that have worked really hard to make it all happen, and one of them's Way in the back there, she's standing by the projector. Yeah. Maya's one of our directors. And backstage. Lauren, come right here. Oh, where's she? Lauren, come on up. <laughs> Lauren's been writing all the stuff on stage for us today and making sure the kids know their lines and go 
goes out than they're supposed to and all that kind of fun stuff. And then uh, Micah was our like understudy extraordinaire. Anytime there was someone missing that day, Micah got to take their part in. So she learned to play inside and out, I think, and ended up actually becoming a part of it when she was running it. Um, and we also have our sound lights crew back there. Hi guys. <laughs> Who help us run all the show. And then I also want to thank our video production staff. Thanks guys for coming out and, um, and filming this today. We really appreciate it. all got to see it today. I knew it was going to be a small crowd, but it's a nice fun crowd, and we know it's a safe one because it's all our parents. So, um, we hope you will sit back, relax, and enjoy our show, which is How to Read a Novel in 60 Minutes. I have a big dress around. I have been sort of the book. Have you ever made this excuse? Sorry, Miss Bell. I couldn't turn in my report because my printer wasn't working. Did it work? Did it work? Oh. Hi, I'm Preston Moon, president of High Tech Industries, makers of fine products such as the Sham Woe, the Chop Wizard, and the Snuggler, bringing you a fabulous new product. My friend Helen Troy is here to tell you what it is. Thanks, Preston. I'm excited to introduce the new and improved comprehensive reading alternative method, or CRAM. Do you say CRAM? That's right, CRAM. What is CRAM? I'll let our new read-on scientists tell you a little about it. Our research found that students in middle school are required to read several novels and many textbooks every year. Unfortunately, many students simply do not have the time to read all of this information. That's right, Edwina. Our researchers found that today's teenagers have much more important things to do, like playing house play with Blackbird. I can't even get past the first two, but I'm a genius. Students also have the important responsibility of spending several hours a day texting their friends, checking Instagram, and also listening to all of their favorite tunes. Not to mention YouTube videos to watch. Look at this! Identify the characters in the book. Identify characters. That's right. 
make it really easy to name drop during class. We will demonstrate this method using step novels just so you get how important this step really is. When looking for main characters, look for a petition. If they say name more than once, it's probably important. We'll demonstrate this using Rube Winter Caves. What characters are important in the story number 18? Well, there's Maru, then there's Otak, after that it's Old Mother, Numai, Are, Kaite, Orca, Eva, and Ibex. His name wasn't capitalized, but I keep on seeing it, so it must be important. Tell me why you think Ibex is a beautiful character in the story. Well, like when he sees the sky, Ibex looks like her dad. The wild goat? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So, Maru and her dad are right the wild goat to see Ibex. Then Maru, also the wild goat, she decides what to do mountain. You know how scary goats are. Thank you. Another time today was to look at the first two of the chapters. Most of the main characters are introduced within the first few chapters, so you are totally safe. Number 19 will demonstrate this method using the classic story, The K. Okay. I've got this. Uh, the first two chapters was all the characters in the book. And this kid, Philip, went Heather, Philip's mother and father, and Heather's mother and father. That the conversations begin. Tell me about the relationship between Philip and Timothy. Timothy. Timothy, the man who was stranded on the cave with Philip, he is a pivotal character in the story. Um, yeah. Well, um, Timothy. Uh, he and Philip take a boat across the lake to the cave where they hide there where everyone thinks they're dead and they come back to the church just as ghosts and uh... Are you trying to compare Philip and Timothy to Mark Twain's classic no novel, Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer? Huh. Sure. Let's see go with that. There are very few new characters in novels today. That's why authors borrow characters from other novels. Let's look at one example using Abby's Nothing But the Truth. Oh, the kid's name is Philip. Learn the cave's history. Must be the same kid. How about this book coming? Remember our friend who's reading the wrong book? What does Grant really helps her out of that situation? Tell me about Grant for a Well, you see, Grant is learning the dark arts from Yubu, and that totally freaks Harry Potter out. Thank you. Thanks, Grant. Okay, some books have a lot of characters, and it's hard to remember them all. So, add in a few just in case. Our next example is The Westing Game. Barney Northbrook, Dr. Jake Wexler, Angela Wexler, Turtle Wexler, Dr. Denton Deers, Del Blasky, Mr. Shin Hu, Mrs. Sun Lin Hu, Doug Hu, Winnie Love Hu, Mrs. Theodorakis, Mrs. Theodorakis, Theo Theodorakis, Chris Theodorakis, Nick Theodorakis, Cole Theodorakis, Nico Theodorakis, Otis Amber, Sandy McSouthers, Laura Baumbach, JJ Ford, Chrysler and GM, EJ Plum, Mrs. White, Colonel Mustard and Mr. Green, Mrs. Scarlet and Mrs. Peacock, Bertha Eric Pro, Julian Eastman, Larry Mon Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that all? Yep. And who's the main character? Uh, uh, it's Curly. It's Curly. Thank you. Of course, if there's a name in the title, you don't even have to open the book. After all, all the other characters aren't in the title, so they probably don't even matter. Let's take, for instance, Johnny Tumay. Tell me about Johnny Tumay. Well, there's this guy named Johnny Tumay. He's the main character. And tell me about Johnny's relationship with Duck. Well, he has this bird, a Duck, who he hides in his jacket and pulls out of his pocket at parties. Thank you. Finally, use the front cover to see who the main character is. Let's pull up an image of Robin Philbrick's Freak the Mighty. See, there's this kid, his name is Freak. He has a huge body, but with a very small head and a double set of arms, which makes him mighty.
When I stepped out into the bright sunlight from the darkness of the movie house, and I had two things on my mind, all new and right home. Tell me about the setting of the outside. Well, there's this guy named Pony Boy in the Blue City Theater in the South Dressing. Okay, well, in the first sentence it says German, and it talks about Dutch people on page 11. So Philip is somewhere in Europe. Now, in chapter 3, Philip says it's on a Chinese boat, so by my calculations, they must end up somewhere in the Persian Gulf. Thank you. Finally, once again, you can use the front cover of the book to assist you in your search. Let's take a look at the cover of the Moon Caves. What clues can you find to help you determine where the story takes place? Uh, well, it looks cold, so I'm going to say that it takes place in a place that has winter. Maybe Minnesota. And I'm wearing sweatpants and sweatshirts, so it has to take place in the 1980s. Somewhere in the Persian Gulf, consisting of one tree. Now the Golden Goblet. Watch to see how a student artfully uses information on the book she actually read. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. How do you think Grandpa's life would have been different if his parents had survived? Um, well, I think that he would have been able to go to Hogwarts sooner instead of having to live with his mother uncle. Then he could have gone and competed with Harry Potter in the Wizarding Games and won the Wizarding Cup. Who do you predict, predict will get the West Indian hair? Um, I predict Curly will get the entire hair. And who do you think murdered Mr. West Indian? Um, it was probably Mr. Green with a revolver and a diamond. Thank you. Continuing right along with Frank the Lions. Do you think Freak will really be the first man to improve to by getting a body transplant? Yes, I believe Freak will be biomechanically improved by putting a small head on a big body and adding two extra arms. And what will your decision be based on? Uh, use your reading boss words. I use my analytical reading skills to make predictions based on available information. Now let's look at the outsiders. This should be good. Who do you, what do you predict will happen to Ponyboy on his way home from the movie house? I predict that he will go back to his farm and share a sound with his horses. But they will be afraid of him because of the mask that he's supposed to wear. Now back to prediction. Now let's take a look at Johnny Tremaine. What's predict will happen to John now that his life has been? 
and changed by the actor. Uh, Here's the cover. Well, you use previous knowledge. Well, I predict that they'll become friends because they both had horrible accidents and they'll ride their horses around town. Okay, so give me a noun and come right on your feet. Uh, you can just 
rocks. Okay. Okay, so now give me a verb starting with the word two. Two verbs. What does it mean again? Rocks. To get crocs. Did you miss me? Well, we have one more matter to clear up. The Dendemon. What did you say? The Dendemon. What is that? It's the resolution of the story. It's French. Oh, the end. Yeah, it's important that you clear up any loose ends before you move on to the next one. There are many different ways to find the resolution of the story. First, you can watch the movie. Like in 1980, a bunch of actors that no one recognizes anymore, except for the project, get started in the remaking of the classic novel. Outsiders. Um, She's asking 32 to read the watch the outsiders before talking to his teacher on the book. Did you tell them about Sandy? Andy? They left Sandy out of the movie. Probably not more than that. I want to know if the teacher who only watched the movie himself. But what would a question on the test that I can test between his thoughts from reading the book? You are so right. Let's watch. Please don't ask me about Sandy. Tell me about Sandy's involvement. It's out of posture. <laughs> well, Sandy wasn't a very important character in the story. Probably really bad at what he did. He means out of pop? No, he means Sandy. Did you read the book? No, I grabbed it. Uh, <laughs> Our final trick to reading in 60 minutes or less is a total secret that should not be shared with anyone outside of this room. In fact, all parents should leave the room right now. Everyone gone? Okay, it's this. Spark notes. Kids, teachers have no idea you're using spark notes. They don't even know how to get to their email, let alone click on the first thing that pops up when you Google any book. So we suggest you use them a lot, because we all know the best way to get information is second hand on the quasi on the website. Big Basket 37 are secret weapons. Read the spark notes and give you a summary of every book right here. Well, first let's start with dying from the no!
I love this new Chinese history survivor reality show. Three, ma three remaining people on the island are Genghis Khan, Kublai Khan, and Zhu Yang Zong. I totally think, I totally think Genghis Khan's gonna kick Kublai Khan's butt in the next challenge. Thanks, CBTG. Yeah. This Dokula History Weather Report lets me know what I should wear tomorrow and helps me understand the colonization of America. Just look, there's quite a part of colonies moving into the Americas. Starting with the Jamestown settlers, that's going to bring in some wintry weather with some disease, famine, and tobacco. Better dress warm. And as you can see, we have the British Catholics settling into the Maryland area, followed by some Protestants. Protestants. That's going to cause quite a stir in the south. Meanwhile, in the north, we have quite a surge of Puritans coming in from the Atlantic Ocean. And in New York and New Jersey, there's a surge of Quakers. Wow! Thanks, TVTG! Now, I think our teacher is finally ready to give us her final grade. Let's check in and see how we did. Well, Preston, I got some help for my own. Can you please welcome to the stage, Mrs. Phil? Thank you. 